This tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 1, Lesson 6. In this lesson, we're going to compare decimal numbers, whether they're written in decimal form, fraction form, or word form. The first section says, show the numbers on the place value chart using digits, use greater than, less than, or equal to, to compare. The first numbers I have are 4 and 22 hundredths, and 4 and 23 hundredths. So I'll start by writing each number on the place value chart. So I have 4 and 22 hundredths, and then I have 4 and 23 hundredths. When I compare numbers, I always start my comparison by looking at the numbers I have furthest to the left. Because on the place value chart, the further we go to the left, the larger the value of the number is. So if I start in my ones place, I have a 4 in my ones place in both numbers. That means I'm going to move to my tenths place. In the tenths place, I have a two for each number. So now I will move to the hundredths place. In the first number, I have the two in the hundredths place. In the second number, I have a three in the hundredths place. That means I have more hundredths in my second number than in the first number. And that makes the second number the larger of the two. To read this as a statement, then, I would say that 4 and 22 hundredths is less than 4 and 23 hundredths. So that arrow that points to the left is the less than symbol. If I look at the next problem, here I have a 0 in the ones place, an 8 in the tenths place, and a 0 in the hundredths place. I'm comparing that to the number that has a 0 in the 1's place, a 7 in the tenths place, and a 6 in the hundredths place. Again, we'll start the furthest value to the left. Well, I have no 1's in either number. So I can see that I have 8 tenths compared to 7 tenths in the second number. That automatically means that that first number is greater than the second number. It doesn't matter that I have 6 thousandths because 8 tenths compared to 7 tenths shows me I have one more tenth in the first number than I do in the second number. So right there my comparison stops. Does not matter how many more numbers I have after the tenths place. So we would read this as 0 and 80 hundredths is greater than 0 and 76 hundredths. In the next section, we'll compare numbers written in various forms. For question B, I have 0 and 83 hundredths. If I look across at the number I'm comparing it to, this number's been written in fraction form. If I read this number, I can still see that this is read as 0 and 83 hundredths. It's just written in fraction form. So these numbers are equal. For question C, I have 205 thousandths written as a fraction. If I write that in decimal form, I have 0 and 205 thousandths, and I'm comparing that to 0 and 205 thousandths. So those numbers are equal as well. In question D, I have 95 and 580 thousandths. So if I look at my whole numbers, those are the same, 95 and 95. I have 5 in my tenths place, 8 in my hundredths place. Here I have a 0 in the thousandths place. I don't have any thousandths in the second number, but these numbers are actually equal because having a 0 in the thousandths place for the first number and having no thousandths in the second number actually mean the same thing. Both numbers have 5 tenths and 8 hundredths, so those numbers are equal as well. In this section, we're comparing decimals written in, as numbers to uh, decimals written in word form. For question F, I have 8 ones and 3 tenths, and I'm comparing that to 8 and 3 tenths. If I write that in number form, 8 and, for my decimal point, 3 is in the tenths place, so you can see those two numbers are the same thing. And in question G, I have 5 and 8 tenths. I'm comparing that to 5 and 8 hundredths. So I can write 5 and 8 hundredths 
in decimal form. So I have five and eight hundredths. So that eight is in the hundredths place. Now when I compare my numbers, they both have five ones. The first number has eight tenths. The second number doesn't have any tenths. So I can stop my comparison there. That tells me that five and eight tenths is greater than five and eight hundredths. And in the last section, I'm going to compare decimals and write them in increasing order, meaning I'm going to start with the smallest number and keep writing the numbers until I get to the largest number. So I have four decimals that I'm going to compare. I'm going to start by looking at the ones place for each number. So I have a three in the ones place for each number. So that's equal across the board. So now let's move to the tenths place. I can see that I have fours and fives in my tenths place. So I want to start with those numbers that have the four in the tenths place. The first one has a nine in the hundredths place. And the second one has a zero in the hundredths place. So again, if I'm looking for the smallest number, I will start with three and forty hundredths. So I'll write that first. And I'm just going to check that off to show that I've used that number. Then I'll go back to the first number that had the four in the tenths place. And I'll write that. I'm going to keep my numbers nice and lined up so I can double check myself when I write them in increasing order. So let's mark that off. Now I can look at the two numbers that are left. They both have a five in the tenths place. The first one is a nine in the hundredths place, and the second one is a zero in the hundredths place. So the one with the zero in the hundredths place would be the smaller of the two. So I'll write that one first and mark it off. And then we'll end with three and 59 hundredths. So again, you can see by looking down my list here that they all have a three in the ones place. Then we have four in the tenths place, then a zero in the hundredths place, compared to a nine in the hundredths place. And then finally, we have our fives in the tenths place. I have a zero and a nine in the hundredths place. So that helps me double check my numbers to make sure I wrote them in increasing order.